Cadillacs were long known for jazzy and interesting interiors, including the 1958 Eldorado Brome, which came standard with magnetic martini cups that allowed you to drink your alcoholic beverage of choice in your vehicle. But by 1976, Cadillac apparently thought that it was time to do something a bit more jazzy with its DeVille lineup. In 1974, Cadillac had introduced the Fleetwood Talisman on its Fleetwood Brome, and this overstuffed, poofy velour interior was a hit with buyers and certainly gave individuals something to talk about in the showroom. But the more lowly DeVille needed something to jazz up its interior as opposed to the standard cloth or optional leather. Thus, in 1976, Cadillac launched a new trim package for its DeVilles in their ultimate year of being these full-size, gargantuan, 130-inch wheelbase beasts. That was the Delegance interior. And here it is in a page from the 1976 Cadillac brochure. You can see there it says, DeVille Delegance, a new expression of comfort, Cadillac contoured pillow seating, is featured in this luxury combination for both Sedan DeVille and Coupe DeVille. Here it is trimmed in Magnon, a ribbed knit available in black, dark blue, dark blue-green, and light buckskin shown above. I love that they called the fabric Magnon. But in any case, you can see the DeVille Delegance interior was posted on the same page as the Fleetwood Talisman interior. So Cadillac was trying to drum up a little bit of interest in its DeVille's interiors that really didn't have all that much jazz until this point. You'll also note these supersized buttons and loose cushion look for the DeVille Delegance, which arguably was inspired by the 1972 Olds 98 Regency interior that had a similar loose cushion design with lots of buttons on it. And I say that because it's known that Cadillac was actually trying to take that Olds 98 interior and use it as the base interior in its low-end series Calais vehicles. However, GM overruled that decision that Cadillac really wanted to execute. Let's now take a look at some actual DeVille Delegance interiors. Here we see a 1976 Coupe DeVille with a light blue colored Delegance interior. And you'll note that both the upper and lower cushion are true loose cushion designs. This was different from how GM typically executed these loose cushion seats in that the backrest often had the true loose cushion, but the bottom bolster did not. It was just kind of integrated into the overall seat like it was in the 1972 Olds 98. So I suppose Cadillac spent a little bit more money to have both be true loose cushion design. The rest of the interior is pretty much standard 1976 DeVille with nothing much different aside from the fact that the script lettering on the passenger side above the glove box did say DeVille d'Elegance as opposed to just DeVille. So you did get a little bit of a more elegant touch there, at least in terms of the writing. But the steering wheel, the instrument panel, and the door panels were really not much changed from the standard DeVille interior. And here's one finished in buckskin or the brochure color. You can see it's that wonderful magnum cloth with the rib design as part of it. Now this car doesn't have quite as low mileage as the other one that I was showing, and what's the dead giveaway for that aside from the fact that there's some discoloring on some surfaces? One is the seat belt guide, and the driver's seat there is about to let go. You can see it's down by the buckle there, probably because it's not staying into the top of the seat. Those plastic seat belt guides were really terrible, and they often break, and there's also a plastic seat belt guide that goes around the seat belt that's missing. There's two portions to that seat belt guide. So that's just one way that you can discern if something is low mileage or not from this era if it's GM related. And here I must say is my favorite color for the Delegance interiors on a beautiful Sedan DeVille, this dark blue green kind of interior. I think it looks absolutely great. And this is on a car that has an exterior finish in the same color. Notice as well what I was mentioning before about the seatbelt guide. See that little plastic seatbelt retainer at the bottom of the driver's side seatbelt as well as the seatbelt guide that snapped into the headrest? That's what it's supposed to look like on a low mileage car and I believe the Sedan DeVille only has 13,000 miles on it. And that's why both of those pieces are still intact and working. And here's a shot of the instrument panel in that same vehicle. 
And you can see that there's really not much different from the standard DeVilles. These DeVilles did use a two-tiered panel instrument panel that was introduced in 1974 where all the warning lights are in a bank there at the top of the instrument panel above the speedometer. And beneath that, you have a well, rather uninspiring looking dash that wasn't made of all that great of materials. The speedometer was pretty plain, Jane. There are no gauges on these vehicles aside from the fuel gauge, which is in the upper left corner of the instrument panel top pad. You just have idiot lights to remind you if something is going wrong. And you can notice on this vehicle that these vents are flopping all around. Unfortunately, the vents are pretty cheap and they don't tend to stay in the orientation in which you place them. You kind of have to put a piece of double-sided foam tape uh, in between the vent and that outer bezel to stop it from rotating on you. And in the leftmost corner of the frame, you can see the infamous Cadillac wiper control. This car does have the optional delay wipers, which is that horizontal element of the control. And the vertical orientation is where you turn on the three-speed wipers, low, medium, and high. I don't know about anybody else, but I absolutely hate this wiper control. It really felt flimsy. It didn't operate well. And if you had the wipers on a delay setting and then you wanted to move them to low, medium, or high, let's say, because the rain intensified. You had to crash through the off position, moving the control to the left, and then go up to low, medium, or high. And if you crash through the off position, just as the wipers were near their park position, they would go into the park cycle before they restarted, which meant you didn't really have any wipers for about two seconds, which was not great. One other interesting bit of trivia is that while the Delegance was the only upper-end trim for DeVille's, the Fleetwood had the Talisman, of course. It was introduced in 1974, but by this point, there was also a Fleetwood Delegance that got a similar interior as the DeVille Delegance, although it was finished in a bit different fabric. So here's a 1976 Fleetwood Brome Delegance, and I think it looks pretty tasteful, maybe even more tasteful than the Talisman, although you didn't get that super huge, chunky center console that you did with the Talisman and instead got this split bench seat. The DeVille Delegance interior would continue all the way through 1984, which would be the last year for these rear-wheel drive DeVilles. But you can see here that the cloth pattern changed, and it changed in 1982. I don't know what I would call it other than kind of like a faux ostrich leather print cloth with these little checks in it. And you notice that the cushioning here is much less plush than it was when introduced in 1976. Not sure if that was a cost savings move, or the fact that some people complained that the durometer of the foam in the 1976 models was a bit too stiff. Those seats in the 1976 models do look comfortable, but if you sit in them, they're actually not all that cushy, and they kind of hit you in the wrong spots. By 1984, these seats are actually more comfortable, and that foam durometer is softer. So unfortunately, though, by 1984, you lost Cadillac's wonderful 500 cubic inch V8 that was only making 190 horsepower in carbureted form in 1976 or 215 horsepower in fuel injected form. And instead, by 1984, you got Cadillac's wonderful, and I say that very tongue in cheek, HT4100, the hook and toe, it was supposed to stand for high technology, 4.1 liter V8 that made an astounding amount of power, 135 horsepower, and really not much torque. I think maybe about 190 or 200 foot-pounds compared to 360-ish for the 500 cubic inch V8. So unfortunately, these cars were significantly down on power, but you still could ride around in sybaritic comfort, which is what you should be doing in the Cadillac anyway because you don't really have to get anywhere that fast. When you drive a Cadillac, the party starts when you arrive. Hope you enjoyed this special on the DeVille Delegance interior trim. There were Delegance interiors subsequent to this, but they didn't look anything like this, and I'm not going to consider them real Delegance trims. The 76 to 84s were the real Delegances. Thanks again for watching. Until next time, take care.